I live in a small town in Idaho, and there is nothing out here. The only reason anyone comes to my town is because of this swanky Mexican restaurant we have here. This place is the bee's knees and folks drive for miles to eat there. The food is rad, the service is famously awesome, and they do lots of good philanthropic things throughout the community, so good for them. I applied for a job at this swanky Mexican restaurant, and I felt that the interview went pretty well. You know, you're supposed to quote off all the experiences you had, and your past works, and that kind of thing, and I was doing a pretty good job. I was sucking up and all that. They called me about 10 minutes after I got off school, and then they were like, hey, do you want to come down here all dressed up in about 30 minutes and I was like oh my god I mean um yeah I could definitely be down there and like right now so I arrived I filled out some paperwork and then they came out with a freaking platter full of full-size candy bars they were literally stacked on top of each other it then registered my mind as oh so this is the kind of company I'm gonna be working for immediately afterwards the manager came out to give me a tour of the restaurant his name was Felipe now the thing you got to know is that this place is 70% dining area and 30% secret corridors and kitchens just right behind the main area Area was all these secret corridors and tunnels for the workers to sneak through. See, I've been going to that restaurant ever since I was a little kid, and I had no idea that any of that stuff was back there. It was super tight and slick, too. Plus, since everybody who was working there was running 24-7, it was a fairly spooky place to navigate. As we were walking past the kitchen, Felipe pointed out two 25-pound bags of onions, and he told me to pick them up. We hauled them into a small room in the back next to a grill, and he told me to cut them up. All 50 pounds. So I started cutting. And cutting and cutting and every 10 minutes or so somebody would walk by and go hey why are you crying i don't know why do you think i am i was back there for a good five hours doing nothing but cutting raw onions the point was to teach me how to handle the utensils that i'd be working with however all it did was winding up giving me a bad case of carpal tunnel and making me smell bad plus to remind you once more i was within three feet of a hot stove so not only was i smelly i was also really sweaty too and this was the orientation i had just filled out paperwork now felipe he was an interesting character he lived and he breathed his job as manager in my months working there i never saw him slow down or take it easy once that dude was like road running on cocaine he was always doing a billion things at once and he did them really well while he was at it i have no idea how much money he makes but he was not making enough he was full of energy and he was really charismatic but when he got mad he got scary one day he pulled me and a bunch of my co-workers into a back room and he passed around a cup of salsa he looked at all of us and he was like can somebody tell me what's wrong with this salsa we were all checking it out looking for mold but it was just plain old salsa we all stood there silently and waited it's not stirred up enough i don't know who is responsible for this and if anyone is not willing to fess up i will blame all of you then he walked out and we were all freaked out felipe didn't raise his voice he didn't do anything crazy he was just angry and his vibes filled the room and everybody was solidly spooked the salsa was stirred more thoroughly after that though. But overall, working there was super fun. We held a meeting at seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and nobody wanted to be there. Once we got there though, we were given free donuts, coffee, and the time that we spent there was paid too. The meeting wound up being a refresher course for how to properly clean tables. We were expected to remove all the plates and silverware and wipe down every inch of the table in less than two minutes. We went around the room and everyone tried and the manager gave us all Nerf guns to shoot each other whenever we made mistakes. Nobody could meet the standard in less than two minutes. And then Felipe was like, lol, hold my beer. First try, he did a better job than all of us, and he managed to do it with time to spare. So returning back to the onion cutting, I was trying to be a guacamolero. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. I would go to tables and I'd make fresh guacamole for the guests to eat. I followed around my co-worker Jacqueline, and I watched her do it so I could take notes. Her and I actually became best buddies. Her and I actually had a ton of stuff in common, and I low-key had a crush on her. It's no big deal. She taught me everything that I know about making guac. In fact, you can click my face if you want to see how I made guac. Since I was just staying there awkwardly, I would tell customers, yeah, I'm supervising Jacqueline to make sure she doesn't mess up again. Isn't that right, Jacqueline? Do you remember the blood? Do you remember the screaming? Do you remember the panic? My first solo endeavor into the magical world of guacamole was a to-go order. I worked in the back, so it was like a nice low-pressure training opportunity. The only issue is, is that I caked the thing in garlic powder and I low-key ruined it. I didn't want to get chewed up by my manager or anything, so I just low-key stuck the lid on it and I sent it on its merry way. The customers who bought the tub were kind of ripped off and if they're watching i will totally give them their money back if they get a hold of me just saying but most of the time i spent working there i was actually tucked away in a hallway where all the incoming dishes were being sent i worked with a team of one or two other folks and we'd clear off the dishes and send them in the back to be washed it was gross work but it was easy and repetitive and we got to talk and get to know each other some days we would go 
gossip about kids at school. Other days, we would have rapping contests, and I'd hear stories about the restaurant. There was one I remember, the ghost at Table 26. Basically, the restaurant itself is in one of the oldest buildings in town, and it's seen some history. It apparently gets a little creepy at night. Some workers talk about cleaning up at night, and then they see a lady sitting at Table 26 just tucked away in a corner. The freaky thing is, is that more than one person has seen her too. Some employees used to leave candies for her at night, but I mean, they kind of had to stop that because it was wasting candy. But a legit spooky story came from when I was working and the owner's wife came in the back and she started fuming quietly. She was like visibly distressed and we were like, hey, are you alright? She was furious because she walked up to a table and asked how their food was. The customers asked, well, since Donald Trump was president, doesn't that mean some of your employees have to be deported? She was seriously ticked off and she was asking us if she should kick him out or not. I was like, oh heck yeah, but everyone else was like, nah. She ended up letting them stay and that was kind of lame. Another freaky thing was a dude who started working there a few weeks after I was on board. His name was Connor. Now, I've never had issues with co-workers. I get along with everyone pretty well in most work environments, but Connor was one of the most miserable, deplorable, disgusting people I've ever met. Like, he's in top 10. One of the friends I made there refused to work with him. See, she had a sister who was autistic and she struggled with body images due to her diabetes, and Connor used to call her able to slurs and mock how she looked. He was just gross. You see, where we were all cleaning off dishes and that kind of thing, there was a big old wall. And since folks would come around racing at high speeds with heavy plates full of piping hot food, they yell, corner, corner, corner. Connor decided that it would be funny to yell, corner, 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 in response. So now people would be going around, corner, 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 corner. And he did this dozens of times every shift I had with him. It sucked. What was arguably the worst thing of all about him was the way he talked about our coworkers. He'd stare at their butts while they walked away and he'd nudge my arm and be like, yo, did you see that? No, Connor, I wasn't looking. Yo, bro, she's gotta be at least like a seven or an eight. Wow, you're you're using numbers to objectify human beings. That's pretty cool. Hey dude, who would you like to bang most at this place? I'd probably like to bang you, Connor, in the head with a tire iron. Bro, I totally banged Jacqueline. She's fine, dog. Oh no, you didn't, you disgusting piece of shit! If it's any consolation though, Connor has since been fired from his job. I'm not entirely sure why. I asked around, I can't figure out why, but chances are something terrible he got caught on. Everything was great, aside from Connor, while I was working there until one incident went down. Basically, I got an order to get up and go to a booth to make my guac. Turns out it was the mayor of my town, I was like, oh, snap, neato. I made the guac and it was awesome, but I put a little too much salt in it. They called me back, and as I was prepping another avocado to put in it to mute the salt, I low-key cut myself in the knuckle. Like, the one time that I wasn't wearing my glove, I cut my finger and I squirted blood all over their guac and all over their food. It just, like, shot across their table. I quietly excused myself away from the table and wandered over to the employee sink, and I distinctly remember seeing what looked like TV static fill my vision as I bled into the sink. I kind of realized that I cut myself hardcore, and I was in the process of passing out. There were a few people crowding around me to make sure I was okay, and they were trying to talk to me, but honest to god, all I heard was just ringing in my ears as I slowly slipped into the void. See, I've seen movies where people faint, and I'm like, no, I ain't no pushover, I'm not gonna let passing out stop me. If I was ever in the position that I would be knocked unconscious, I would make an effort to stay awake. And that's kind of what I did, I just rode the express train to nothingness and I managed to stay awake. Felipe came over and he sat me down in a chair, side note, what a gentleman. He told me to hoist my hand above my head and he handed me a Dr. Pepper to drink from so I could get some more sugar in my blood. Some color returned to my face and I was back from my little excursion from the void, even though my hand freaking hurt. He looked at me and he was like, hey, Nate, are you, are you feeling okay? I was like, yeah, I, I'm feeling a little bit better. Good, now you just put on your plastic glove and you get back to washing dishes. Boy, I just saw Jesus, I don't want to work anymore today. So I finished up that shift and I only used my right hand. In fact, I finished up a lot of shifts just using my right hand. Actually, I used my right hand so much after that that my rhomboid muscles on the right side of my spine swelled up to the size of a baseball. And here's the thing, it hurt. Horribly. To this day, I haven't felt worse pain than what I was going through when my back was all messed up from that. I could barely drive home at night because the bumps were awful. I went to go see a doctor and it turned out to be an issue with underused muscles suddenly kicking into overdrive and they react negatively. It just shows how lazy I am. Needless to say, I wasn't able to do my job effectively and I put in my two weeks notice at work. I was worried I would be a liability to the company, to my coworkers, and I had to step down. I made up some lie about doing an internship with a local advertising company and I've hit the road. I've actually been doing 
doing YouTube instead. If you're watching this, Felipe, I'm sorry I lied to you. You're super cool. Hey there, I hope everything's going. Take a chill pill, bro. And it really sucks because I still haven't quite recovered from the muscle thing. It still flares up at random times and it's, it, it sucks. See, what's worst of all about the whole back thing is that it can only be fixed through exercise. So I'm like stuck with it for my entire life. So I guess there's a really important lesson to learn. Considering all the amazing friends, good vibes, spooky ghosts, even the douche canoes, all of that can go away in an instant if you don't wear gloves while cutting out Hey, that was my video about working at a swanky Mexican restaurant. If you enjoyed it, you should strongly consider subscribing so I can have a momentary ego boost. And while you're at it, why don't you click on that little bell thing so like your phone vibrates whenever I post something so I can like make more videos for you and stuff. Thank you for watching, you sexy creature. I'll be back every Wednesday for you. Ciao.